WWE's Backlash WrestleMania just concluded. Phil and I are going to talk about the main highlights and the main matches and just give our main analysis and takeaway. This is the Coach and Crew Show. I am your host, the coach, Charlie Krause. With me, as always, is the man we call Tantor, a.k.a. Phil. And we'll start with the main event. Phil, you and I texted right at the end of it and said, because these six-man matches, they get tough to, to write a good storyline for. And I had a, if I had two assumptions of how it was going to finish. One of my two assumptions was Jimmy laying down and, and taking it. And sure enough, he did one, two, and then Jay came in for the save. And then all total chaos and mayhem broke loose. And it got awesome. And that was a great spoilers finish for the six-man match. How do you view the, the six-man main event? I usually think that these compilation matches are junk. Uh, they just thrown together. All they want to do is get some finishing moves in, just killing time. Basically, it's just a match to kill time. It's a space filler for WWE. This match actually was really good. I mean, it was good from start to finish. It built up. I mean, they did everything in the ring. It was some playtime in there and a little bit of tease. Everybody got their moves in. Everybody got to look good. And we all know that Riddle and Jimmy are the little runt guys yep. that are the fall yep. guys. They're the guys that are going to eat the pin. Yep. And yep. it was it was cool. And then at the very end, that last, what, three, four minutes was just incredible chaos. I mean, it was awesome. I didn't know how it was going to end from there. And you said it best, Riddle and Jimmy, they're the, they're the two escape goats. I, I said this to you in text. I was kind of hoping Roman would take the pen by McIntyre himself just to give some hype and build up. Because after 400 and some odd days, it's hard to keep, continue to advance the storyline. I thought that would advance the storyline, though I don't see those two wrestling until they go to those three consecutive stadium shows. And I think yeah, some me too. So I don't know what they're going to do at Hell in a Cell, but I do think that Drew McIntyre will not face Roman Reigns until one of the three stadium shows or two of the three stadium shows. I don't know how they could pull off all three, but right now, who else is Roman Reigns going to wrestle? He's got to be in all three shows. I mean, you can't have a stadium show without the Universal and WWE champion. I mean, he, he is the man, and you have to have him in all three. But no one's set up to take him on with the exception of Drew, and he's really the logical choice. But He is, he is the logical choice, and I, I don't like bringing back the same people. But the only other thought was maybe they bring back Brock. I don't know. Don't give Vince any ideas. I, I'm trying not to. Well, all right, but that, but that match was awesome. That that match was awesome. I mean, it was it was an absolute brilliant match, and I enjoyed it tremendously. Uh, let me raise both hands and give um, the 20 year vet Randy Orton the RKO out of nowhere on Roman Reigns. Roman didn't yes. take it as well as he could have, but I didn't see that one coming. That was that was a good pop. Uh, it's right out of nowhere. <laughs> Let's transition to the other, uh, well, I guess the, the true championship map on, on the SmackDown women's side, the I, tap, I, I quit match between Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair. We, you assume the finish was going to happen. I, don't, I did not expect the finish to happen the way it exactly happened, but I did expect – uh, Charlotte to 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 lose and and to say I quit. So that part was not surprising, but the match overall was quite quite enjoyable, and I I, I thought it was it was it was a great spot of the match. Uh, I thought it was either going to open the show or close the show. So I was wrong by those predictions. Well, I thought that match was brutal cubed. I had to reset Peacock three times in that match. And it is so frustrating that Peacock hasn't gotten their act together to basically freeze matches with the string. I had problems with the string. Um, besides that, that match, truthfully, it looked brutal. And some parts of it, I swear, looked like a straight shoot. 
that those two ladies don't like each other. And it looked like they were going at it. Listen, I've fallen guilty before of having to be reminded that sometimes even though the action is real, there is some script involved. And sometimes I'll be first to admit, I forget that there is script, but Phil, you're right. I mean, I, I luckily we didn't have any lockups, but um, it looked like this times they were like, yeah, I don't like you. I'm going to make sure this one stinks. Yeah, so. exactly. And I cringed a couple of times going, Ugh. and and like you said, the action's real in there. I mean, that's some real, but it is scripted and they have rehearsed this stuff. So people aren't supposed to get hurt, but I swear a couple of times I thought someone was going to get hurt that uh, there was some bad intentions in there. So, you know what? Both those ladies, you fooled me. Congratulations. Great match. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so there, there's the greats. I was in. You were over. Both you ladies, you're over with me. You are definitely over. Here's what I'm not over, but I'm glad it's happening this way. The new edge is a little too slow for me. And uh, both, that's because the real edge is very slow. well. Some of it's because real edge is too slow, some of it's because storyline edge of judgment day is also too slow. I I, I knew there was gonna be an outside interference, I got that 100% right. I had a 50 50 guess of who I thought it was gonna be. I guessed wrong. Uh, I was thinking initially just, just to because of the, the their former setup and storylines, I was thinking it might be Finn Balor. Hey, I'm so glad it was Rhea Ripley. Good for her for her. That pushes her storyline forward. I got that prediction of the match right. I was kind of, like I said, hoping Finn Balor was going to play that role, just the old bullet club type of thing, turning them on, turning on to that, and then giving Finn a, a much needed uh, kind of push, but he would be he would, he would be a role player. So I'm glad it wasn't him. Uh, what 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 about you? Are you ha satisfied with it being Ray Ripley? Oh, absolutely. I did. I mean, we knew that there was going to be a third party joining that fact. Yeah, absolutely. I was completely blindsided with it being Ray Ripley, but she needed to go heel because she was already turning heel. She needed to go full heel. Because the women's division in Raw is not working no. at all. And they need a Rhea Ripley heel belonging to a tremendous faction that it's building up to be. And then, look, round of applause to AJ Styles for selling that one. He really had to carry Edge. Edge can sell a move, too. But, you know, Edge is slow out there in the ring, and AJ really made him look good tonight. And I, and I thought the match was good, and having Rhea Ripley come in and interfere worked. It all worked. Yeah. I can't believe this is the fourth storyline. And I, the, just the way my, my, my mindset of where I wanted these to fall. The American Nightmare and Seth freaking Rollins. Uh, you could say that that some people, like Shane, thought, thought that was his favorite match. Um, it was my favorite match until the end until the main event match that the match was my favorite but it started out if you're going to open a show you can't choose wrong by having Seth freaking Rollins open your show and having him in probably one of the best performers in the game with the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes <laughs> what can go wrong on that one that's going to be awesome yeah, I mean, I have nothing negative to say about this, about that. It just somehow it fell to the, the fourth main storyline uh, for whatever reasons it did. And then we had filler matches in between because the rest of them were just pure filler matches, in my opinion. I actually liked the almost match. Really? Yeah, I, I did because it showed Bobby Lashley – overcoming adversity it it really you know he was coming up there and then you had to have mvp coming in and and doing him dirty that's how that match should have went that's how that match should have gone through there heck i was of the belief that omos is a waste all right i didn't think he could do more than 45 seconds in a ring 
and he actually went five minutes. So it exceeded my, my expectations of that match were an F minus. And it came in as a C plus. So I'm thrilled with it. All right. I, I see what you're saying there. Uh, for me, it just, I, I expected a dirty finish. I expected, I don't know. I just, like you said, I, me and I don't, I, I'm disappointed Omos is now the Raw's big man. I thought we've had better Raw big men in the past, and he's not. Well, somebody he, like by the name of Braun Strowman, maybe? Yeah, yeah. That would work great right now. Yeah, but, or somebody by the name of Big Show. Yeah, again. Now, I'm okay with Big Show because he's now over 50 and, and you know, moved on. I'm, but Big Show is always one of my favorites. Always one of my uh, top five. Uh, another guy that comes to mind was maybe Rowan. Yeah. It basically how about Kane? everybody's better than almost is the big yeah. man. Even the great Kali. Oh, he can barely move anymore. But yeah, he'd probably be better than almost. I mean, great Kali doing um the I mean the dance off with to the Shawn Michaels theme music. I mean, can't script better <laughs> raw than that. <laughs> To the end of Kali's prime <laughs> descent. So, but uh, putting you know putting all your eggs in the almost basket as being the big man and the unstoppable force is not the direction that I would go in. No. All right. So directions. That's that's that takes us into the final segment of this. What's the direction now? We still have Hell in a Cell before the three consecutive outdoor. Uh, I'm sorry. Premium live events. No longer is it a pay-per-view. Right. So we got three premium live events throughout summer. We got SummerSlam. We have uh, Money in the Bank. And then we have the UK pay-per-view. Uh, I'm sorry, live event. I don't know the name of it. I'm sorry. But then you before that, you have Hell in the Cell. So what's the direction? Because Hell in the Cell can't be just a filler pay-per-view at this point. I don't know what they're going to do because really and truly there's no storylines right now going on. Yeah. You've got the judgment day. Are you going to drag out AJ Styles again for that? What are you going to do with um, the American nightmare? You, you can't have him go against Seth freaking Rollins again. No, that, that ended. That one, in my opinion, ended. The only yeah. one I think for sure is, Okay, uh, the two tag teams will go head to head in a cell match because that's a hell in a cell match. But what do you do with your champion? You can't not put your champion on there. Who's he going to go against? I mean, you're going to pull the Drew McIntyre trigger? You I think they've got to wait until the stadium show for him. I do too. So I, I don't know where. I guess we'll find out this week on Raw and SmackDown. But I mean, he Shinsuke came out there one time. Are they going to put him against Shinsuke? Don't know. Um, you've got to have a face to go against Roman Reigns. And quite frankly, the only face that they're building up is Cody Rhodes. They're not building anybody else up on the face side. And I, mean, I do, do you, like how they're know, I mean, it's like they're, they're completely bankrupt on the face side right now. Unless you want to um, – uh, beat up AJ Styles that's been completely destroyed by Judgment Day if you want to elevate him. I mean, he could go in and be a perfect match for anybody. He can carry any match. I, I just, I know they're slowly merging the the, the, the the two brands and they're getting slowly rid, rid of the split. I think it's time for that. But I agree. I, I mean, You have to hold off McIntyre until the stadium shows. We both believe that. So what do you do with your champion? for one storyline season or one storyline segment. I don't know. So yeah. that's where we're at. Yeah, I mean, that, I, they're, they haven't built anybody up, and that's, that's the huge problem that they're having is they just really haven't done anything to develop anybody. And that's, that's on creative. That's on them. Well, the one thing they've done, people, folks, if you haven't done it on Peacock, during slower hours, check out Young Rock because you can start with season two. Just start with season two. Watch, oh, yeah. watch episodes one through eight. 
you'll fall in love uh, by an extreme latest episode five where they drop a huge hint bomb to mania. And then by season uh, episode eight, like Phil and I grew up in that era or we were already in our early 20s by that era. So it was just drooling out of both sides enjoyment. But Young Rock's well worth it. So check that out, folks. And then also don't forget, like and subscribe to the Coach and Crew Show coachandcrewshow.com and give us a follow back and leave your comments below what you thought your takeaway was to tonight's Wrestlemania backlash. Thanks for watching.